and we get to decide. And if we're not actively deciding, we're kind of just living in autopilot. And if we're not actively deciding, we're living in a reactive and victim mode oftentimes. So just be creating the awareness of, ooh, my thoughts really do matter. And they're making my brain look for proof. Do I like what I'm seeing? Hey there, I am so excited to share this episode with you. If you've ever wanted to feel more confident, connected, and joyful, you want to stick around for this episode. In it, I have the pleasure of talking with Nicole Eaton, who shares how you can shift your beliefs and your energy. Nicole Eaton is an intuitive therapist, two-time author of the best-selling book, Rock Your Comeback, the down-to-earth guide to reclaiming your power, host of the Rock Your Comeback podcast, and creator of the online space, The Comeback Club. She has brought dynamic transformation to thousands of clients with her unique style that interweaves her experience as both a mental health counselor and an intuitive. Nicole has a passion for helping others break through blocks and reconnect with their personal power to completely transform your life. I truly enjoy this episode and I'm so excited to share with you today. Do you grind all day just to come home and think about everything that you need to get done, feeling exhausted, and you desperately just want to feel a sense of energy to do the things that you want to do in life? If this is you, join my free masterclass, Roadblock Breakthrough. In this masterclass, you'll learn how to transform from overworking exhaustion to energized and focused. Grab the link in the show notes. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Rewiring Health. I'm so honored to be joined by Nicole Ian. So thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I think this is going to be just a very fun conversation. Yes, I agree. And, you know, we connected on Nicole's podcast, so definitely check that out. And I, uh, but what I want to dive into is because there's always a backstory to what people do and and the mission that they're they're living and the purpose that they're living in. Can you just talk about your backstory and what brought you to where you are today and who you serve today? Yeah. So I talk a ton about this in my book, Rock Your Comeback. And actually, when I talk about Rock Your Comeback, I always say I wrote it as a manual for me 10 to 15 years ago, <laughs> because 10 to 15 years ago, I I was in a really rough space. I got married when I was 19. Mm-hmm. And I shortly after found out I was expecting. And so I had my first daughter in the heat of my bachelor's degree. Mm-hmm. I was 20 years old. Um, and going through school and being pregnant and giving birth and becoming a new mom. um, It was just a lot. It was a lot on my mental health. It was a lot on our relationship and it was a lot on our finances. And so I found myself in what I refer to as a black hole moment. It's just that inability to see past where you're currently at because it just feels like you're on autopilot. You're just getting through the day. Everything feels hard. Everything feels crazy. And I was going to school, um, I have a master's in mental health counseling. So I was going to school for mental health. And and it's crazy because I knew what to do to help me feel better, but I just had the most impossible time trying to put those things into play. So I, I remember when I started my internship and I was actually seeing clients, I remember feeling like the biggest fraud, like, oh yeah, I have all the answers, but I can barely get out of bed <laughs> to get here. And it was this wild, uh, just inner conflict experience of knowing and not doing. And I remember that there was just this moment um, where I began to get introduced to manifesting. And I found the book or someone gave me the book, The Secret by Rhonda Burns. And it's a really basic beginner guide to manifesting the idea that not only do your thoughts matter in how you feel, but that they actually materialize. And although I don't really do manifesting in the, I won't say that entirely, in in the materialistic way, I've really taken manifesting to how do you get out of a depression? How do you get out of anxiety? How do you redefine who you believe yourself to be? How do you develop confidence? And so that's what I'm really passionate about at this moment in time is not just how do we do the mindset? How do we understand the energy? But how do I help you get to a place where maybe you were insecure or broke or sad or just not feeling like yourself at all to really rocking your comeback to stepping into a version of yourself that you're obsessed with that you love that you enjoy being in your body and 
it was a journey to get here. And I think the thing when man manifesting and when people talk about manifesting, it's this woo woo idea and it holds no base in psychology. So I spent a lot, a lot of time in my book going through the neuroscience behind it, why it's effective and how it works along with some energetic sciences of why it works and how it works. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. Cause I'm, I'm such a firm believer in myself and just going back to what you said, it's so relatable talking about that black hole where you feel like you can't even look outside of like the current moment because you're literally surviving. And I can very much relate to that. I'm sure so many people who listen are, are like, yeah, I've been there. So it's very hard to like get out of those moments and see that life could be different when you're going through that. And then also another thing that was so relatable is like, you know what to do, but you're not actually doing it. Like, and that, that's a really tough place to be in because it's like, I can help other people, but I can't even help myself. And that is, it's, that's a huge struggle to feel like that. I know I felt like that even when I had my chronic back pain, I'm like, I'm help, I help other people, but I can't even help myself in this moment. So can totally relate to that. And the manifestation, I love how you talk about it. It is perceived as woo-woo in many cases, but there really is a deep science about it. And I would love for you to dive into that more because I think when I, at least like for when I hear this, when I know there's validity and science, it is so much more meaningful and you want to apply it. Can you talk about the science behind that and how it actually plays a huge role in rewiring the brain and reprogramming it? Yeah, actually, can I touch on just like for anybody who is in a black mm -hmm. hole, there's yeah. two things that I really, really suggest because I, I don't want anybody to feel like, oh my God, I know exactly that feeling. I know that, mm -hmm. that pit of despair feeling if you're listening and you feel like, how the hell do I even start to move out of that? There's two things that I really recommend for that. One is taking things a day at a time. You cannot control what's going to happen the, you know, next week, next month, next year, but you can control where you're at today. And I promise you, if you start to begin to set those intentions around just getting through the day, getting up and getting dressed, um, finding something that brings you just a little bit of joy, even if it's like a great song or stepping outside into the sunlight, if you do that every day, or at least as many days as you can, it will start to add up. Um, and then just reminding yourself that, that you can neutralize any thought, any emotion, any feeling through breathing. And it can be that easy is that when you start to feel overwhelmed, if you can just stop what you're doing and follow the flow of air down through your nose into your lungs and back out, and you can even give it a color. You can give it a really pretty color. You can make it, you can make it all like calming or teal or blue or whatever the color is. And you can see yourself releasing a, you know, something murky or heavy. It can be as easy as that to neutralize the energy. So I just wanted to address that for anybody yeah. who's in that black hole moment, because I don't want to leave you there. And, and the book does really well at kind of laying that out all the different ways that you can move out of the black hole. But I love talking about the science behind manifestation. It like geeks me out. Um, because here's the thing is that you have a million things coming at you at once. You have a million billion things you could pay attention to at one time, but your brain decides what to pay attention to by what you've told it. It is pretty much a glorified Google search bar. And uh, if you type something in, it's going to start looking for it, not only in your external world, but in your internal world. So when we have these search inputs, let's say, you know, uh, I'm always broke or I'm always exhausted. I mean, I think that's a good one, especially if we're talking about chronic Absolutely. illness, right? Or I'm always sick. Yeah, I'm always yeah. exhausted. Mm -hmm. If we are saying those things all day, every day, what it's going to do is a thought repeated becomes a belief, which means if you've said something enough times over and over and over again, your brain's going to go, okay, this is what we believe. This is what we're going to look for. And the belief becomes that filter for your perception. So your, your belief that you've said over and over, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. And now it's become a belief. Now it's become a filter for your world. It's going to look for proof. Mm -hmm. Our brains are so powerful. It, it's a wild how powerful they are. So if you're looking for proof that you're tired, you were always going to find it because that's how you stay in alignment with what you think and believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're wondering if you've been, you know, hanging out with Kelly for a while and you're like, you know, I do feel that way. I do say that a lot. And as a mother, I'm guilty of that, of saying I'm busy, I'm tired. I don't have enough energy for that mom things. Right. Yeah. 
So you have to be mindful of what you're telling yourself about what's going on. And you don't have to flat out lie to yourself. This is where manifesting gets messy and bullshitty. Okay. I'm going to break this down for you. Super easy. You don't have to go from I'm tired to, oh my God, I'm so energized. I have more energy than I can possibly think of because your brain's going to go. No, you don't. You've told me for the last 20 years how tired you are. What you're going to do instead is you're going to notice when you're saying that, catch yourself, just be aware of what's going on in your mind or that you've been thinking that, or even if you're feeling that way, that you might be sending that signal and you're going to just get curious. I'm willing to believe something different. I'm open and willing to believe I can feel a little bit more energized every day. I'm, I'm willing to find the tools that help me feel a little bit more energized every day. I'm open and willing. Open and willing is like my cheat code for overriding any manifestation that you've ingrained that you're like, oh, I don't really like that. And that's the cool thing is you can just go through like what's not working in my life and maybe it's finances. Well, what are my beliefs around finances? What are the things that I tell myself over and over? And if that's true, that what I tell myself, my brain has to look for in not only my memories and in my um, external environment, I'm going to prove myself right. So do I want to prove myself right about this or about uh, about that? And we get to decide. And if we're not actively deciding, we're kind of just living in autopilot. And if we're not actively deciding, we're living in a reactive and victim mode oftentimes. So just be creating the awareness of, ooh, my thoughts really do matter. And they're making my brain look for proof. Do I like what I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. And it, it's such a huge point here. And for anyone who's been stuck, like this is huge. You should probably rewind and listen to it again, because like we often, you know, <clears throat> I've caught myself before I was aware of this, that like, see, it's true. I knew it was true. It's like when you say these things like, oh, I'm exhausted. And then something else happens that makes you more exhausted. You're like, see, everything is just causing this to happen. But it's like when you realize that you're literally filtering out the world and you're seeing these things and you have control over what you believe it's so empowering rather than feeling like the world is working against you. You realize that like it's working for you. You're just seeing what you want to see and what your brain is filtering out. So I, I love that. And such a great explanation that you gave for that. Be and, and just owning that openness and willingness to and getting to that neutral. Cause I think that is you're, you're so right. It's a huge sticking point for people where they're like, well, how do I go? It's like, you know, going full speed forward at 60 miles per hour. And then you got to flip in a reverse and go 60 miles per hour backwards. It's like, that's impossible. But if you can just slow it down, at least go to neutral, then we can start there. And that's just, that's such a beautiful way to look at it. So thank you for sharing that. Neutral's a really powerful place to be. A lot of people think that we're high vibe creatures. I think we're neutral creatures. I think that our baseline is just being kind of okay. And then we can like play and create from there. But I think that putting a ton of pressure on yourself to feel happy all the time or to think great mm -hmm. thoughts like I teach this for a living. I've written two books. I have a podcast. I don't think positive thoughts all the time. That's insane. It's not human nature, but we can at least become aware of our own bullshit so that we can, yeah. we can, we can just question it because mm -hmm. this is how crazy our brain is, Kelly. We have state dependent memory, which means that if we're in a good mood, our memories are going to feel like they were more often than not more positive. Mm -hmm. If we're in a bad mood, our memories are going to be more often negative. Like that's how crazy and silly our brain is. And if we can remind ourselves that we can, our brain has no idea what's real and what's not. It has no clue what's real and what's not. Everything that you believe right now isn't real or true. It just is something you've told yourself over and again. And yeah. if we start to get that idea of like that creativity, it changes things. And like on top of that, we have, we have each thought that you're doing, it's producing an energy and the energy is really reflected in your mood. Some thoughts feel better than others. And that's where the other part of manifestation comes in is when we talk about energy, good things, good thoughts feel good. Good situations feel good. Bad situations don't feel good. And so I like to address both the neuroscience and the energetic component. I actually had a client call me this weekend and she's like, Nicole, I've had more car issues this past year. My daughter's had having car issues. My boyfriend's having car issues. We are all having car issues. What gives? 
Mm-hmm. And I said to her, I said, you probably started with one. You probably started with one thing, one, one experience. And now that experience is highlighted of, I can't afford this. I can't do this again. And now we've got a little momentum behind it. We've got not only your brain, just like, I can't do this. I'm focusing on it. I don't want it. And what the universe hears is I want it. I'm focusing on it. This is something I'm paying attention to. And because I'm paying attention to it, I want to see more. And so what we talked about is to, if you have a situation in your life that you're like, I don't like this at all. This is not working for me at all. I would say, of course, you've developed evidence of it and proof of it. And that feels really, really true that this is, you're just a bad luck Betty, you know, but the reality is, is that we can reset the energy any day, any time, um, in any way, shape or form, and it will change things. So I, you know, told her, I was like, you got to go home. You got to stage your house. You're going to take an Epsom salt bath. You're going to clear out the energy and then you're going to start to reset the mindset. I like to clear energy first because sometimes we can get really locked in in our heads and it's really hard to change. So with the mindset work, you're going to go in and you're just going to decide things. My car is super reliable. My car is always reliable. It always gets me to and from with ease. It's really easy. And, and I'm really lucky to, to have that. And you're just going to refocus your energy on that. Every time you start to shift into that space of like, Ooh, what, you know, what's going to happen. We're just going to rewrite it. We're rewriting the story and it's, and it's really cool and exciting. And I even saw this with a client with one of his businesses. He was saying, gosh, I just feel like everything's going wrong at once. And I was like, well, when's the last time you stepped back and got out of that automatic programming that you're in and automatic energy. And so one of the things that he was complaining about was that his, his uh, payments, like he had massive payments that people owed him and they weren't paying him. And I was like, okay, well, let's clear it out. So we cleared out the energy and he was able to reset some of those thoughts. And within 72 hours, this man had, I think he said three or four checks, a $70,000 check, a $50,000 check, um, he had a massive corporation that finally signed the contract. So that will be 150,000. Like the wow. way things can shift for you in 72 hours, if you just pay attention to those two things are mm-hmm. insane. I'm not saying that in a salesy way. I'm saying that in an empowerment way of, I want you to remember your power that at any moment of your day, in any time you can change your life around or any situation that's not working for you. That's amazing. And just like, thank you for sharing that too, because it is that that's, surely evidence for somebody who maybe has never experienced that before, but can look deeper into what they are telling themselves and how they can start to make those shifts. And I know how you talked about the clearing. So is as far as the sage, just to dive into that and like the saging and the clearing, can you go into that more? Because again, that could be one of those things that people can be like, oh, is this, this, this feels woo woo to me, but can you talk about what that actually does? And is it the ritual of sage, saging or is it actually the saging? Like, can you just talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So I like to explain energy like this is every time you're really stressed out and you guys know whether you believe in energy or not, it, there's things that feel heavy. There's like, if you go to a funeral home, you don't feel light and free. If you, go, you know, if you go into a heavy situation or a room where people are fighting or you get in an Uber where the driver feels creepier off, everybody feels and processes energy, whether they want to acknowledge it or not. It's that individual intangible uh, feeling that you're getting about something. It's your body reading the energy. So let's think of if every time I walked in my house after a really stressful day, or my husband or my kids walked into a house after a really stressful day, that they took off a backpack and they just left it in the hallway. If for 365 days, everybody in my house, anytime they had anger, stress, fear, worry, anxiety, that everything was a backpack and they took it off and they left it in the hallway, it would be really hard to walk through the hallway. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you kept that energy on your body and you just kept piling up backpacks, (laughs) it would be Mm -hmm. almost hard to see you because energy sits where it's not removed. Mm -hmm. So People might notice not sleeping well if the energy is um, wonky. They might notice them. And I always say if you're feeling anxious for real no reason, like nothing's particular situational going on. If you're feeling really sad and you feel like you can't shake it, if you're ruminating and having the same types of thoughts over and over again, staging and getting energy clear will help you. Um, Now, two things. You don't have to sage to clear energy. Um, You don't have to do any of that physically. You can actually envision uh, energy pouring off of you. You can envision what we just talked about with breathing and just breathing in a color, breathing out a color. You can actually clear energy in your person 
visually and visualize. That sounds absolutely crazy, but try it out because I've never had one person go through a visualization exercise with me and not feel like what the hell just happened. Mm -hmm. There's power in that. But when you're not feeling powerful, I recommend sage, Palo Santo and an Epsom salt bath. So what I do with the sage, I like sage for my house. So Mm -hmm. I'll open some windows, I'll light the sage and I'll just set the intention that anything that is heavy or just not supposed to be there, that it clears that it goes right out the window and only the good stuff stays. And so I'll just go from corner to corner around every crevice of my house of each room um, and just set the intention that the energy is clear, that it's back to normal. I actually did this yesterday because we had painters in and out um, for a week or so. We had, we just had a lot of people in and out. Like we were on vacation. So people came to stay with the animals, like lots Mm -hmm. of different types of energy. And I hadn't had a chance to clear in like two weeks. And I was out of town last week and my um, daughter called me. She's like, I cannot sleep. Can I sage? And I'm like, absolutely. And so I walked her through the process of it. And so the kids even notice a difference and sleep better when their energy is clear. Um, I like Palo Santo. Palo Santo is like a wood stick. I think it has like a native American background. That one I like for personal energy. I'll just run that over me or I'll run it over kind of top of an Epsom salt bath just to clear the energy over top of an Epsom salt bath. But same intentions, we're just clearing any heavy energy. Um, And the Epsom salt bath, I swear by it, if you're a really sensitive person and you feel like you take on other people's emotions, you feel like you, you know, can't really get away without feeling anxious or depressed, Epsom salt bath. That, if you can do that a couple times a week, it just helps clear like sea salt of any kind helps clear energy so immersing yourself in the ocean would be cool but if you don't live near an ocean or it's cold out an epsom salt bath will do just fine and clearing out it also usually has magnesium in it which helps calm the nervous system anyway so it's like a twofer like you're just in a really good spot but yeah it doesn't have to be hard we can make it really easy um and you can get sage and palo santo pretty much anywhere that, I mean, you can get it on Amazon, although probably not the most high quality, but you could get it on Amazon. I think intention matters more than the quality of something, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. Um, But any rock crystal shop will sell you some, you can find anything there. Uh, but it's pretty easy to find. and, Mm -hmm. And it really makes a huge difference in the house. And as somebody who used to suffer from massive depression and massive quote unquote depressive disorders, it's been a saving grace. It took me a really long time to recognize how energy impacts me and how frequently it impacts me. And so I'm very, very protective over my energy at this point in my life. And so if you're somebody who feels like you are just tossed around by the wind, like you're just having 20 different emotions throughout the day, that's a really good practice that you might want to look into and find what you feel called to. It's individualized. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing something, it's going to, it's going to add up. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all that because that is, it's so like just these simple tools, but like what a, what a difference. And just to have these, because like, I'm someone who takes on people's energy. So like, I can very much relate. And like, I know a lot of people do that. And sometimes you're not even aware of it. And that was, that was an issue for me for years. Is like, I feel a certain way. And I'm like, why do I feel this weight? Like nothing really happened. Where's this coming from? Like, so just having that awareness and then having the tools to work through that and do it consistently is huge. And one thing you touched on, which I'd love for you to revisit is just talking about when you sense those energies, how can you really tap in and trust yourself? Like, this is how I'm feeling. How can you really get into like more of like your intuition and start to cultivate trust in yourself? Cause this can be a big thing for people, especially my audience who tends to like maybe suppress how they're feeling. Cause they're so driven and just want me to get work done. And they like, I don't have time to figure out what I'm feeling. So how do you start to tap into what, where your energy is and how you can start to move yourself or elevate yourself along that energy spectrum. I love this question because it's so important. I think a lot of people, I think most people are intuitive. Intuition is just Mm -hmm. your soul guiding you. That's it. That's, that's those nudges. And especially for high achieving women, that's those nudges that help you make that sale that know who to call that know that that's that quick witted thinking. So if you're in that position, you're already doing it. You're Mm -hmm. already doing it. However, Trusting yourself. I find that a lot of women who are really trusting themselves in their career don't trust themselves in relationships. Mm-hmm. I see like there's typically a disconnect yeah. between that. So there's always going to be an area where you feel more trusting of yourself than others. My biggest tip is to sit with yourself, give yourself five minutes, 
give yourself five minutes, just tune in, tune into your energy, tune into your soul, tune into yourself. Because when we're so busy, it's so hard to hear our intuition and know how it speaks. But when we slow down and just commit to that five minutes in the morning, put your hand over your heart, close your eyes and just come back within you'll be able to a invite intuition. And I, I set that standard in the morning of like, who can I be today? Like, how can I be a best version of myself today? What would you have me say? What would you have me do? That's the take on um course in miracles, but you can be a deliverer of your best self. You can invite your best self in. You can set the intentions for the morning. And when you start to do that, you start to hear things in a little bit of a different way. And what I mean by hear things, you're not going to like here like intuition doesn't need to be like a crazy ass voice <laughs> but you know what I mean like external yeah. voice that <laughs> isn't how people's intuition really works it's a gut feeling it's a um it's a knowing like my intuition is strictly knowing which can be a little harder to trust mm -hmm. it's a vision that you see in your head it's just like this draw or pull towards something and if you're practicing trusting it and you're giving yourself time to get to even just quiet down to hear it, you can actually take a little note section on your phone. And just anytime you have a gut impulse about something, like you're driving, you're in a shower, you're, you're in a relaxed state and you just feel like, Ooh, I need to call Paul, mm -hmm. stop and call Paul. Or what you can do is you can write it down. You can write it down and say, this is my intuition notebook. And I felt called to call Paul. I would still say do it because that's usually like you need to do that. There's something there. But I just want you to develop proof and evidence that what you are feeling pulled to guided towards. I want you to like just really see it on paper so that when it occurs, you're like, yeah, my intuition was trying to speak to me. I think that our brain needs evidence and proof to really buy into things, which is why I was telling so many stories about manifestation. I want you to and, and about energy and why that matters. Because our brain needs some kind of proof like, oh, this happened when I started doing this. That's true. So now that we have the evidence and we can see it and we we know that on you know January 14th, I had this feeling that I needed to go to Orlando and then I went to Orlando and I met the love of my life or I needed to join a gym and I joined the gym and I met my best friend and we started a business together. And it's in those beautiful, tiny little moments that our life changes but it's always when we feel called towards something. Mm -hmm. And so trusting yourself is tricky, but the more you get to know yourself, the more easy it is to trust yourself. The more you write things down, the more easy it is to say, oh, I have proof that what I was feeling was correct, that what I felt called towards, man, that led somewhere. Or I can see where I started to make assumptions about what my intuition was trying to say and where it was wrong. So I can really hear it the next time it speaks instead of saying, oh, I felt called to do this. I'm going to do this, this, and this instead. Mm -hmm. We do that too. We like to, our intuition is really organic and it's never wrong. It's our interpretation of what it means in our life that makes it wrong. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Totally. Yes. Yeah. So I've had that happen my, myself. I like, I'll feel it. And then I'll be like, what does this mean? You know, and it is the interpretations get hard sometimes I find like hundred percent. How have you worked on that? Like to really understand it better. Like you get the message and then how do you get their interpretations to be more correct? Um, I'll write down exactly what I get yeah. because that way I can look at it and I don't have to overthink it. Um, for a while when I was doing like sessions and stuff where I did more readings and stuff, I would get information and I would decide what it meant. And then I would deliver it to the client and they're like, that's not correct. And, and so I had to really take time and be like, okay, this is exactly what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. And they would be like, oh my God, that makes so much sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so that helps me, I guess, reading other people's energy helps me with my own is to be like, okay, you were feeling called to do this. It just write it down. It doesn't mean it's leading to this big, beautiful thing. It might not even be for you. I was called to work with somebody earlier in the year and I got in my head. I was like, oh, this is like, this is going to happen. And it didn't happen. And I was so like jacked up about it, to be honest. I mean, after all these years, I should know my intuition, but I was like, what happened? And I remember a couple months later, this woman reaching out to me and she's like, you actually saved my life. And I, it was just like a single moment that you said something to me that I wasn't in a good spot and I didn't want to stick around. And 
so sometimes our intuitions, not even for us, but when we start to try to interpret that they are, we get messed up and then we don't trust our intuition. Sometimes that when you act on intuition, you're part of the invisible string. You are a part of the things that are connecting things together and you feel called to, um, and be a role in somebody else's life that you didn't realize. I actually saw a really cute TikTok the other day and this guy was uh, was recording a video and he was wearing the, I think it was like a t- toad and frog shirt or something. It was like a, a oh. character. Yeah. And he walked by a woman and the woman just stopped him and started sobbing and was like, I had asked for a message from my son this morning who passed away um, last week and his oh. favorite characters were the ones on your shirt and I literally asked for that 10 minutes ago and here you are. And so oh him getting dressed and feeling called to put on this stupid shirt was a moment for her. And so it's all intertwined. And so if we can stop feeling like it's all about us, <laughs> I think it mm-hmm. also helps is that sometimes yeah. the things that you're going to do in your life that are the most impactful and meaningful have nothing to do with you and your success and your drive, but you being a light in somebody else's world and So yeah, that trust is a little hard to develop, but when we can start to just tune back into ourselves, our intuition will be like, oh, cool. She's listening. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I just love how you talk about how interconnected we are because it it does sometimes feel like we're just in our own little world. And it's like the most biggest thing you can do to be a disservice to yourself is think that it's all about you, but it is like, we're so connected. I love how that example you gave of the the shirt that is just, it's absolutely beautiful. And like, I've, I've had things happen like that in my life. And it's like, once you start to see that and how things are connected and you're open to it, yet you see more of it. And I think that makes life fun. Like those synchronicities that you start to see pop up and asking for things to come into your life. And then you start to see them. It's, it's just amazing, but yeah, it's that willingness and openness, just like you said before that you have to have to really cultivate that, that I've, I've noticed in my life too, but it makes things more fun when you believe that things really do happen all for a reason. So I love that. I mean, manifest, like manifesting changed my life. I wouldn't go around saying that I was somebody who believed in anything before Mm -hmm. I really started doing that. And it, it changed my entire world. Everything feels magical and everything feels intentional. And I, I just see it very clearly. I see how things are working in my favor. I see how things shifted in my favor. And I'm really blessed to see how things shift in other people's favor, even if they're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been really lucky in my career to be able to work with people so deeply and intimately that I'm able to see their patterns in their life and how they got to where they got and, and what that looks like. And that's, you know, why one of the reasons that I promote manifestation so much, because yeah, the brain stuff is important and, and it, and it needs to be said it's important. Brain science is important. We have to know what we're doing in order to override it, but man, the, the world is a magical place. Mm-hmm. And if we forget that it's a very lonely, scary place, mm-hmm. but when can, we can remember that all the things that are occurring, all the things that are happening, it just lightens it a little bit. It just allows us to lean back and say, I don't know why this happened, but I accept that it did. Mm -hmm. I don't know why things are going chaotic in my life, but I feel like if I just tune back into myself and get clear on some things that I can reset it and rewrite it, it's Mm -hmm. just an empowering feeling of being supported. Mm -hmm. Um, that I know I don't know if I ever thought I would have, and it was it's just hilarious. But I talk about this a lot in my book. Is just I didn't grow up with any religion. I didn't grow up believing in God. I didn't grow up believing in the universe. Like so, the fact that I just talk about it all day, every day, and now is really really funny because I never saw it coming. Like it's just something that found me, and that resonated with me, and that changed my life. And it, I would be doing everybody in the world a disservice if I didn't shout it from the rooftops. You know. Oh my God, I love that. And I like how you talk about where you came from because I can very much relate to that. Like did not, this was not part of my dialogue or, you know, repertoire. And then it's like, the more I became open to it and more I saw things in my life, I'm like, this is exactly what you said too. Like we're connected. There's something bigger than us. Like we're here for a reason and we're here to be doing something great. And we're here to serve people. We're here to help people. And we're, we're guided all along the way. And we just realize that like it, everything does become more be- beautiful. And if you asked me that 10 years ago, I'd be like, this is a bunch of crap, <laughs> you know, but now I, I see it. Like so much crap. I used to talk yeah. so much crap about spirituality. <laughs> like, I didn't get it. And I didn't like what people were selling me. And so I think for some yeah. people, 
who hear that message and, and resonate, like, mm-hmm. Don't listen to me if it doesn't resonate with you. Don't listen to Kelly if it doesn't resonate mm-hmm. with you. Find the things that do. Find the things that feel right and feel good. Actually, there's yeah. um in my book I talk a lot about um there's a group of scientists called neurotheologists who study the recognition of God in the brain. Mm-hmm. And it actually is an area of the brain that lights up when you talk about the universe God in a, in a non-shameful um guilt-free way. When you talk about it as love, when you talk about it as being interconnected, there's an area of the brain that lights up. And I just think that's the coolest fun fact I'll ever know is that like, there's something in your brain that says, yeah, no, you're right. That makes perfect sense. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. I have never heard that before. I'll have to, I'm gonna have to look this up now more. (laughs) Like that's amazing. I love that. And it's just like, that's where it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. Like you can have that spirituality part of you and you can also have the science part of you and it can come in together very seamlessly. And that's, that's what I absolutely love because it's, it's all together and each one explains each other. And that's the beauty of it. And just what you said right now explains it even more how interconnected that is. So it's amazing. I love that. I feel like we could talk all day about this stuff. (laughs) I absolutely love it. But like, just like you said, you know, if you connect with it, find someone you connect with, because you have to like, you have to really trust and believe in it for you to be open to it. So I think that was my problem. I didn't have great role models growing up for many of these things in, in some respects. So I was closed off to it for a while. But once you start to see people that you really relate to and can jive with, it's like, now you get curious. And I think that it's that curiosity that opens you up and you become that kid again, where you want to learn, you want to grow, you want to see what things can be like. And that's the beauty of all this. So I absolutely love that. And just play like, if I can offer any advice, just play, play with your thoughts, play Mm -hmm. with different modalities of healing, play with life, have more fun. Like that there's so much emphasis on how to heal and brain science. And I love all of those things. And there's a time and place where all of this will be effective. But if I could give like the biggest piece of advice, make your life more fun, be intentional about it. You're the only person who's going to make it that way. Yeah. Huge. That's absolutely huge. And again, like, thank you so much for being here, Nicole. And for someone who wanted to connect with you, how can they find you? Um, best way is NicoleEaton.com. I have all of my events upcoming on there. Um, the comeback club, which is my $22 a month membership. We do a lot of fun stuff, master classes every month, and you have access to my entire history of classes and, uh, yeah, uh, Instagram and TikTok, NicoleEaton.xo. I have a bunch of stuff, free content daily on there. So yes, thank you so much for having me. This has been yeah. such a great Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I I truly enjoyed it. And I know it's going to serve some many people in in significant ways. And if it just opens someone up to realizing that there's more beyond what you're living right now, and that you can expand, evolve and elevate yourself, like, it's just that's a beautiful thing. So again, if you're listening to this, share it with someone you think would, uh, would benefit from it, and you could really start moving their life forward. And again, thank you, Nicole, for everything that you shared today and brought to this podcast. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for listening to this episode. I hope it serves you well to start rewiring your brain to create the life you desire. If you found value in this, please share it with a friend and tag me on Facebook or Instagram at Dr. Kelly Kessler. 